Hello and welcome again to Blue Garden Cottage. It's lovely to have you along with us. Um, before I start anything else, I would love to say a thank you to all of my 157 subscribers or 156 today. It's I'm really grateful for your support and for sticking with me. And I hope that we can continue to be friends. For now, as you can see behind me, I have got the loom, it's empty. So obviously that means we have finished a rug. And I'm gonna show you that now. And here it is, finished, the first one. I am, um, I am not happy with one thing and that's the, the, the very corners over here. So I'm going to try and do something with that corner, all of the corners. But in general, it came out really nice. It feels really good. It's quite a firm, it's a nice firm solid rug. Um, and I've just got, well, not now because I changed my mind. I was going to put them four together for a rug for the living room floor but on second third and fourth thought and consideration with buttons being part german shepherd and she sheds a film a white film across the carpet every single day um so i was thinking with this being a weave to vacuum the dog's hair out of this impossible I just wouldn't be able to get all the hair out and it would get mucky very quickly so and I mean it would have to be washed by hand because four of these put together wouldn't fit in the washing machine or rather it would be too heavy for the washing machine to wash so I decided that from chopped up denims I'm going to make a patchwork rug for the floor instead and these are going to go I'm going to make a whole lot more of these to make covers for the chair cushions for the settees and the chairs because I really like them and I just put it over the back of the, the one chair and you can see it goes quite nice with the wood actually so if I made another to go across the bottom then backed and lined it with some really sturdy strong fabric I could make a cover for each set of cushions back and bottom right the way across so I would have to make another three four five six seven eight nine nine more of these rugs so there's going to be a heck of a lot of fabric cutting to do and hopefully <laughs> it'll be done before christmas so as i said in the previous video once i'd got the rug off the loom we were going to make some changes and we have we have now added corner brackets on the inside and on the outside when the warp was pulled tight between the nails the force of it actually bent the the top and bottom bar forward a bit even though there are two screws in each end which would normally stop that but because the force of it even though I didn't pull it very tight it was just slightly bouncy but not too loose and it wasn't too tight it wasn't drum tight so it, it still pulled that beam further down so I think just to make extra sure if the next rug also does that I'm going to put some cross beams in the corner with more of the same wood and that should finally sort that out so the next rug we'll see how those brackets actually work but I do think that the wood should normally if you're making a loom yourself make sure it's at least two one and a half to two inch wide wood so that you could get a double bracket one with the four holes in it or four or six holes in it 
that would give you much more stability and stop this these beams moving these nails I do think should be a little thicker with rounder heads because the fabric tends to want to slide off so if there's a flatter rounder head then it would help to stop it coming off so easily so hopefully now that we've forced it back into place put brackets on it will be a little bit better to um, keep the fabric on I might have to try and bend these nails slightly so that to, um, for us it would stop the fabric um, sliding off the pins there we go so there you are chopped up a pair of denims it's about to become an apron for my granddaughter so obviously this is going to be a bit shorter because she's only little but I won't make it too short so that I could fit her for much longer the waistband I will keep to make the strap around the neck and um, the apron is made out of the leg I've used the back bottom section of the jeans to make the apron front and there's some pockets in it and another leg I've chopped to go across the bottom that way I have utilized the seam that'll stay in place for the bottom of the apron because there's a ready-made seam and the rest well it'll be a patchwork it's another make do and mend little one wanted an apron because grandma had an apron but now grandma's also going to have to make a new apron for herself because that is just way better than my scruffy old maroon kind of horrible one that I've been using but um, I'll still keep using it for the scruffy jobs maybe in the garden for now I did want to make some crossback Japanese aprons um, but that will have to be a project for another time as you know we have quite a lot of projects on hand still that need to be completed but I'm really glad that I get a chance to use denims in this way this is one of the most recyclable items out there you can do so many 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 things with denims it's unbelievable I mean you just have to scroll on Pinterest or Google images or anything like that and you will find hundreds upon hundreds of images and ideas of what to do with denims I have seen people use the seams cut out to weave baskets even pockets to make patchwork quilt cover uh, you know patchwork cushion covers um, stationary wall hangings for, for putting stationary in the pockets I mean it's the, the, the number of things you could do with denims is unbelievable but um, denims are usually I get them from other people who know that I collect them so that I can do these projects so whenever anybody I know and in my local area is getting rid of a pair of jeans they send them my way on the coat I don't think you can see it it's all black but where the buttons are it has oh let me put my hand behind it you might be able to see better then there's a rip where the button was and um, because this fabric is not that brilliant so what I'll do to fix this I'll sew a patch over that to strengthen it and then put the button back on so and I'll check all the other buttons to make sure that they're all okay as well yeah they're all fine it's just that one for some reason maybe so that one will be patched up button put back on a pair of trousers was also given to me lovely you know those loose flowing lovely wide leg trousers that can look so elegant on a more or rather a less shapely figure than mine however they're light they're cool they'll be lovely in the summer being quite squat and voluptuous these trousers will have to have a, a quite a fair bit cut off so I need to cut off some leave some for a seam at the bottom I've already measured where I need to make my seam so that's quite a bit that needs to come off from that pin over there you can see that's where the measurement is so that's what we've been doing 
well, when I say we, the rug is a we thing, a joint thing, and the other sewing is just bits and bobs that I would do. Excuse me. My hair is constantly falling out. A, you know, it's beyond normal hair loss. <clears throat> I've spoken to two other people I know of that have had COVID very badly and they have the same problem and one of them their hair loss is even worse than mine and I mean hands full of hair come out at the same time so I can just do this and I get quite a lot I mean, my hair is so much thinner than it was I used to have this really thick heavy bush and the hairdresser would comment about it every time I went it's now very thin and on the side you can see through my hair to my scalp and it's getting that way on the top as well you can't see it on this camera but oh, just just doing that I'm getting hair all over me and um, even just combing it you just come out with tufts of hair it, the hair loss is that bad but there are no roots on the hair there's no roots on it so it's literally breaking off at the scalp so the roots are still intact so uh, one doctor said that it's possibly the stress and the trauma of being severely ill I can go with that combined with uh, mineral deficiencies the stress and yeah I can go with that because I've seen a couple of people now that have had severe hair loss after being ill like that this last year so but thankfully the roots are still there as there's no roots coming out so it'll recover it'll be fine but if you were wondering if you've had COVID and you have severe hair loss, it could just be that. Let's hope. I told hubby that um, if it gets any worse and very wispy, if it's almost like alopecia, I'm just going to shave my head. Then we'll be a family of matching, you know, uh, <laughs> baldies just until the hair grows. But... Um, it's fine or whatever so yeah that's one thing that happened since then yeah oh and the sneezing so it's that time of year in the spring when even more flowers are starting to come buttons are snoring there do you know oh she's snoring away that dog you know I've been up since four o'clock this morning I uh, did some tidying up got ready to do the video I can hear snoring upstairs so that's why the videos when I do them in the morning I'm almost whispering because I don't want to wake the rest of the family up usually if I get some time I sit and do some sudoku puzzles it's a bit addictive I think doing the Sudoku and you just do one turn the page do another one turn the page do. so yeah I can do something more constructive than that in the evening I think yep somebody's got up I think it's my son yep he's awake and it's not even six o'clock in the morning the piece is disturbed as now time to get up and get doing so I shall hopefully catch up with you next week which is a craft week we haven't been doing a huge amount of the wood crafts at the moment but we have done something what's been done I can't remember I'll have to let you know next week what else is there we've done it's just gone out my mind now completely gone there was something else we've done oh I painted that one lampshade I'll show you that next week or have I already I can't remember oh my goodness the memory is still um, a bit dodgy but there you are yep people are up day has begun I shall speak to you then it's been lovely to be able to just catch up with you and tell you what we've been doing as far as homemaking goes for this week because it was homemaking this week next week craft week after that self-reliance or 
whatever else is important at that time. Okay, I shall splice all these little clips together. I am not expert at editing in any way, shape or form, but I shall just put them together and cut out some unnecessary blank spots and hopefully not too many mistakes just to make it fit in in the right amount of time for a video and well so that I don't lose you before the first five minutes of the video is up. I did ask last year what viewers wanted out of this channel, what you'd like to see, what you don't like to see. It's very difficult because they say on YouTube you can look at the video analytics to show you which videos are working and which are not, what type part of the video people are watching more, if people are watching from beginning to end the videos, or if they're just skipping through. Um, so, and then you can check on the statistics as well. It shows you um, how many people are viewing. It doesn't say who's viewing, it just says numbers. Um, and so I haven't been able to pick up a pattern yet. Um, I, I'm not, I can't figure it out why there are some videos with over 200 and one with 300 views and, and generally suddenly now they're hardly getting up to 20 views. So people aren't actually watching. So there must be something that I'm not doing that people would like to see. What is it you would like to see from this channel? I'll ask again. Nobody responded. Um, you could respond to me via the Blue Garden Cottage Facebook page um, and I, I have taken my email down because um, I think I've taken my email down off my channel because I didn't want people to contact me directly that way because it might be a bit of a security issue and for me to be able to keep up with um, the notifications it's just incessant if there are notifications non-stop <laughs> so either in the comment section below if you have a youtube account you have a youtube channel you just set your settings to whether it's private whether it's public whether you want um it just it's just for your own saving of playlists for yourself or whether you want to actually make vlogs or whatever so you can choose but if you have a youtube account you have a youtube channel technically but you could just use it for your own personal watching a video saving to playlists liking things but if you don't have a youtube account you can still like and share videos you just can't comment on them to be able to comment and subscribe you need to have a youtube account so I think maybe quite a few of my viewers don't have YouTube accounts. That's why they cannot comment on the videos and um, maybe not share safe to like videos in their own um, accounts. Um, so maybe that's it, but you can still like and you can still share even, you know, you can share on your other social media platforms if you have any. So you can still do those and that would be helping me a huge amount because it helps with the analytics on the videos because that is what YouTube algorithms use to promote your video. If it doesn't, if you don't get many views, if you don't get many subscribers, it just doesn't put you up on the search. If people type in keywords in the search and I try to make sure that my title, the description box, the thumbnails and the video have similar things in so that there's a recognizable pattern. Um, and I you know i hate asking viewers to like subscribe and share and do that i it I, i'm still not comfortable with doing that but it really would help if viewers did do that even if you don't have a youtube channel and you can't subscribe or save the videos or comment you can still like and share and that still helps a lot so i'd appreciate it if you could do that um, I do appreciate the comments that we get. I have, there are, I have lovely viewers. They're so compassionate, so kind, and I hope it stays that way. Just because I'm such a small channel, it's still quite intimate. So there are close connections now with the viewers and the subscribers. Um, so I am I'm apprehensive and nervous about getting any more because the, the more subscribers you get from other channels I've seen, the more there might be 
um, people who are not so kind and compassionate and supportive, but those I know how to deal with anyway. So thankfully that's okay. I'm still, when I get a chance, because we're just so busy when I get a chance, I still watch more videos from those who are professionals at making videos and give and teach about how to make videos and how to make changes and stuff. But usually some of them cost money to do something. So for now, I'm just keeping it simple and basic. So it's not that interesting, but hopefully there is something of value for everybody in these videos when they come to this channel. And I would appreciate to find out what you would find or what you do find of value in these videos. And then hopefully I'll be able to make them more specific for you. I have set up that pattern so that you know this being a homestead, I've said it a number of times before, so I hope I'm not um, being unnecessarily unnecessarily repetitive but being a homestead a suburban homestead and a very busy family I there are lots of different things that happen and I'm hoping to share with you those different things in a, a, a structured pattern that is why I said before we do the first week of the month video is gardening, the second is the homemaking, the third is the crafting, and the fourth to do with self-reliance, and the, which is a very broad subject anyway. So, and as you've seen, I've got the Kanban board that helps me to set things in a visual order. Um, so I'm hoping there is structure to this channel and that I could share with you what we do, but just sharing with you catch-ups on what we do is not always that beneficial. I've seen so many more times in the successful channels that people do how-tos, instructional videos. I've told you before, I'm not comfortable with that. But um, I will try to do something in that vein because that is the direction I need to go in anyway. And it'll give me good practice for when I want to make some manuals and write books um, and online courses. So it will help me to practice for that. And so I hope you'll be patient with me as I figure that lot out. So that's quite a bit of just mumbled on with you about the chat on the sofa, the settee. I don't have a comfy slouch in sofa. This is a settee, a very, very old, solid one. I, again, everything here to, is, is upcycle, make do and mend. So do keep popping in. I will keep reminding you every week of what's coming up the following week. And next week is the craft week. So I hope to see you then with something interesting to show you then as well. I mean, obviously what I've shown you this week is technically crafts as well. Homemaking stuff, make do and mend, fixing up mending, making new things, creating new things for the home. Um, solving a few little problems and next week hopefully should be something just totally creative we'll see all right people whatever you're doing this week between now and next I hope it's a good week for you right folks I'm mumbling again I've got to get on with it I shall speak to you then have a good safe healthy week a creative one get out in nature we've been able to go for a couple of short walks lately and the benefits are just it's it's lovely to be able to get out in the air fresh air whether it's cold or warm or whatever just to get out in nature and it is such good medicine for the soul so until next week thursday have a good week chat with you soon bye bye